You cannot see me at all, can you? Here I am. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to another round of Kanji Plays. And today we are going to be getting into uh, Mantis of Madness, second edition, getting back into some more scenarios. Uh, after the first scenario that we completed last Sunday, I mean, even before that, I knew I loved this game, but that one really solidified it. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun as we. Board the Stargazer Majestic and find out what's going on. Hey, Steph, how's it going? How's it going? Welcome aboard. Pull up a chair. Pull up a chair. Everybody that's popping in, just gather around the table. Let's have a good time and have some fun. Uh, before we begin, I want to say thank you to my Patreons. I appreciate you. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. I appreciate you as well so, so much. So uh, we are going to dive in and see how things are looking. But before we do, let's get some board game geek info, and then we'll hit the table and kick this thing off right. And I keep vanishing off of all of these. I'm not sure why. That's odd. All right. So, um, Matches of Madness, second edition, 8.1 board, board game geek, thematic 16, overall 35. Um, uh, out of 27,000 people rating the game, and 3.17 thousand comments that hit an 8.0, which is super high, and overall a 35, which is great. I don't find, uh, Fantasy Flight Games is doing good work. A lot of their games are high on the list. Uh, I'll say Nikki Valens and crew is doing good work because a lot of games were up on the list. A uh, great group of artists that did all of the uh, Lovecraftian work that's on here, and published by Fantasy Flight Games, now owned by Asmodee. Uh, the game's best played three to four player. I'll be playing three player. Uh, it's about 120 to 180 minutes. Hey, Robert, what's going on? Pull up a chair. Uh, age 14 plus of the community says 12 plus can handle it. Uh, it's a weight about a 2.68 because it's an app driven game. And before you shut it down and say this 
I don't want to play a map-driven game. You got to give this game a shot. It's a map-driven game that helps you place the board, but it's still really good how things work out. You'll see. You'll see if this is your first time watching. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get right down to the table now and have at it. Okay, so I've got the board cleared and ready to go as we board the Stargazer Majestic. And we have the story that is up of what we're going to take. And as you can tell, it's a, it's a 3 out of 5 difficulty. I, I, I don't know what that means. The last one I played was a 2 out of 5, and that one was a lot of fun. So this one's going to be even better. Uh, duration about 90 to 150 minutes. We're going to play this thing through until either I fail or I win. And it says, Murder on the Stargazer Majestic. A brutal murder begins an ancient ritual aboard the Stargazer Majestic. With an unnatural storm brewing around the luxury dirigible, you must discover the murderer before the fabric of reality unravels. So, yay, we're gonna... So this, this specific scenario is in the um, Horrific Journeys expansion set, you know it by the train. And they added a few new things. They added rifts. That, that come in, and it basically says, after an investigator in space containing a rift performs an action other than move, if there's a rift in their space, they become lost in time, which is, which is a new condition. And it is a new condition. Come so you grab a lost in time card and see what happens. Whenever an investigator forfeits an action while in space containing a rift, they become lost in time. And these are rift tokens. That's what these things look like here. Oh yeah, my brain's going to be through at the end of this. So those are her rift tokens. Uh, they also added water tokens, which kind of hinder movement on what things are going on there. But uh, line puzzles, kind of a new style of puzzle that comes through. And then they have moving tiles. And they have an additional feature, which is the hidden depths. Uh, uh, like agenda card face type of thing that we have to deal with. So when those come up, we'll go through those rules to make sure what those are and frequently ask questions. So... It's not too, too bad, but we're going on a journey. Come and ride with me on a fantastic, on a horrific voyage. Okay, so uh, let's get started. So we're going to select our investigators. Our investigators are Father Mateo, uh, which is this lovely. If you follow me on Instagram, you can see I, I usually post the minis I paint, and they're not the greatest. Don't, don't look at them and be like, don't expect them to be top shelf quality. I'm a beginner, but uh, if you want to see those, they're on Instagram for you to peruse. So we're going with Father Mateo, Jim Culver, and Preston Fairmont are our three investigators. Just kind of mixing it up. Hey, what's up, Steven? Pull up a chair, pull up a chair. So let's gain our starting items. Okay, so we start with for our starting items. We start with a 2 by 4 a cap hat. Captain's hat. <laughs> it probably should put this in alphabetical order. Makes it a lot easier. Huh. Next uh, Captain's hat. Diver's helmet. Sturdy luggage. Who doesn't like some sturdy luggage? Um, infill bravery and... Uh, Jim's golden trump. Trump pick. Ta ta ta. Okay, still bravery looks like it might get spell. And still bravery. It is not a spell. It might be a condition or a special item. It's a special. No, it's not a special item. Nice. It is. It looks like it's a spell. I have all the cards that have come with it here. Because uh, Jim's trumpet has that has this symbol on the back. Forgive my not knowing. Maybe it's like one of these 
things like this, fine clothes. Maybe it's like fine. Here, player gun and rope. Yeah. Harder to hear. So let's go through and see if we can find it. Here. Assemble. Uh, instill bravery. What it's called. Seems like it would be a spell. Reveling. Feed the mind. Rack. Flesh Ward. Install Bravery. There it is. How did I miss it the first time? That's weird. Okay, so what we do with these is we shuffle them up and we grab one of them and give them to somebody. And each investigator begins with one clue. Okay. So we'll shuffle them up, give them to somebody. So grab that one. Investigator, you get a clue, and you get a clue, and you get a clue. So, uh, Preston Fairmont has an ability that says, once per round, when you gain an item, you may flip one horror face down or discard a face down horror. Father Mateo has another investigator within range, which is space of three, three or less, uh, becomes focused, activate this ability only once per round, Jim Culver says, you, been, you begin the game with the Golden Trumpet Unique Item. And the Golden Trumpet Unique Item says, each investigator within range may discard one face down horror. So, we're taking care of horror this round. Now, it's still bravery. Says, you or another investigator within range discard one horror, then flip this face down. I'm going to give this to Father Mateo. Since it has like the cross. Father Mateo will be taking that. Okay, and we all get a clue. Let me turn on. It's probably gonna be yeah, continue setup, so we might get some sound. You are traveling aboard the dirigible airship Stargazer Majestic on a transatlantic voyage to Arkham. While playing cards on the bridge with your old friend, Captain Pike, a cry of alarm sounds from the gondola below. Insisting that you remain, the captain darts away to investigate. Outside, dark clouds gather and light rain begins to pelt the hull. A natural black lightning bolts crack in the distance, and you can't help but feel a dark presence looming in the storm. When Captain Pike returns, the color is drained from his face. He explains that a passenger has been murdered in an occult ceremony. The captain pleads for your help with the investigation of both the murder and the ritual. Whatever dark force is at work, it must be stopped. Alrighty. So, uh, just handing out the equipment. I gave Preston the 2x4 so he can have a weapon. Father's weapon is his bravery. And uh, Jim has the golden trumpet, the captain's hat, which says you may convert all um, uh, magnifying glasses to successes. And he also has sturdy luggage. So there's at least one benefit in hugging around your belonging. And he can use it as a weapon. It's a heavy weapon. Alrighty. So, let's get some stuff going. As you descend from the bridge, you notice that breakfast has recently been served and people are going about their daily routine despite the morning's sinister affair. Place the viewing room one, two, and three tiles is in the
These are all the trains when you would do hit. So there might be a fitting room. I don't know this scenario, so I am winging it. There's a lot of things on a ship, I'll tell you that much. Uh, let's see, viewing, all of them are part of the expansion. So this is viewing room two. Then the others must be the same. So let's see if we can find them. Viewing room three, viewing room one. Okay. So this one is so. This. Then this. Like that. There we go. Nice and lined up. Okay. Standing on the observation deck, you take in the large windows of the room. Place your investigator figures as indicated. All right. You pull open a worn notepad that has served you well over the years. Any important information regarding suspects and gathered evidence will be recorded here. Captain Pike, Captain has provided you with a brief description of the passengers and crew members, along with their cabin numbers or role aboard the ship. An investigator gains the incriminating evidence unique item. Any investigator may, any investigator may review the collected evidence by interacting with the app. Any investigator. Yeah. Incriminating evidence. Ooh. So we'll give that to the, fa the good father. The captain mentioned that the body of the victim, Will Rusford, was found by another passenger, Fred Cooper, in the storage hold. While he was hesitant to do so, he reminded you that nobody aboard should escape suspicion, not even members of the crew. time. To ensure, to ensure the suspect cannot take control of the airship, you encourage Captain Pike to lock himself on the bridge. When you are ready to make an accusation, he asks that you contact him using the ship's intercom, located on the observation deck. You locate it quickly, but note that several wires have been pulled out, perhaps indicating some form of sabotage. Place a interact token as indicated. Okay. The storm is much more noticeable through the observation windows than surround than, than the that surround the room. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up, and the and the sensation puts you on edge. Place a sight to it. Isn't it? A clipboard with a stack of papers has been left on the table. Place a search token. as it? Near the port side window, a young stewardess is scrubbing away at the floor, dry tears streaking her face. Place a person token as indicated. This is Ethel Gibbs, the crew member aboard the Stargazer for Justin. Ethel, hey Ethel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, a well-dressed man is gazing out the front observation deck window, occasionally drawing on a cigar. Place a person token is indicated. This is Arthur Holloway the Third. Arthur Holloway the Third. A breakfast table stands off to one side of the room. Place a search token is indicated. A, a door leads to the hallway. Place an explore token is indicated. A door provides crew members direct access between the crew office and the observation deck. Place an explore token. Investigate the murder. Gather evidence and contact the captain to make an accusation. All righty. We're ready to dance, dance, dance. So I'm going to have somebody with observation probably needs to do this. I'm going to have Preston move one here and investigate this clue. A clipboard with a stack of papers has been left on the table. Search it. Picking up the clipboard, you notice that the papers are all complaints filed by former passengers. The captain must have left this here in haste. Each of the pages detail items that disappeared from cabins during previous trips. They do go on to list the missing items, several very valuable, and the approximate time frame they went missing. As you return to... As you return the clipboard to the table, a glint from the floor catches your eye. Gain the Elder Ward common item, then discard the search token. All right, ready? Starting off with the Elder Ward common item. I really need to put this in alphabetical order. <laughs> with a lead pipe in the study. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played Clue in years. I need I need to find that game. See if there's like a solo variant. Uh, why am I missing this? What is it? The Elder Ward. Okay. Elder Ward. Mr. Elder Ward, where are you? Yeah, put it in the wrong place. Oh, here it, is. it says roll one additional die while while a monster is attacking you. And that goes to Preston. Oh, let me hold it up so you can see. There it is. All right. All right. The incriminating evidence has been updated. Okay, so that is the end of Preston's turn. Um, let's see if we can look at the incriminating... Nope, nope. Let's see if we can look at the incriminating evidence without... Okay, so what information would, li would you like to review? Um, suspect. Which suspect would you like to review? Uh, I guess we need more information, so let's not... We're not ready to do that. Yet. So I will say a father, the good father, will move here and look at this. A breakfast buffet table stands off to one side of the room. Search. Father, how are you at lore? Cool. The buffet table is covered with different breakfast foods, including an array of breakfast meats and eggs. Crumpets and scotch pancakes are lined along the leftmost edge, and an unusual delicacy, crimson carp, is displayed proudly in the center. As you approach, you notice a dark red stain on one end of the tablecloth. Lifting up the linen, you find a small knife covered in sticky substance. The rolls have begun. That's lore. Uh, Mr. Faza has four lore. He's forlorn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, he's gonna 
he's gonna use this clue to make that a twofer. <laughs> yeah, make that a twofer. One. Upon further study, you realize that the substance must be blood, but the nearly black glittering hue made it difficult to discern. You pick the knife up and notice strange occult symbols etched into the hilt. This must be the murder weapon. You look around and realize that whomever, whoever placed this knife here had to have been one of the observation, uh, had to have been on the observation deck sometime this morning. Very interesting. Gain the ritual dagger, then discard. So they, they were on this morning, so that's what we're looking for. Where were you on the night of the 5th type of thing? Ritual dagger. Time to, anytime, no ritual dagger. All right, so the father's got a weapon. A ritual dagger. Any evidence has been updated. Okay, so Jimbo's turn. Um, Jim is going to move one. Two, and he's gonna have a conversation with. Oh, sorry, and he's gonna have a conversation with the lady. All right, hey, sweet thing, why are you crying? Uh, Ethel Gibbs is on her hands and knees, scrubbing the observation deck floor, dry tear streaking her face. Um, I'm gonna ask her, Is everything okay? Eh. Yeah, startled, she wipes at her face. Oh. It's nothing, I'm fine. When she realizes that you are not going to give up, the tears start anew. That poor man, I overheard the captain talking about the murder. Do you really think it was part of dark ritual? Are we safe? She starts to say something more, then pauses. You patiently wait for her to continue. Influence, and I roll four dice for influence for Jim. Oof. I do anything with that nonsense. This was the test for him to make, and I rolled trash. One success. I'm sorry, but I really have to get back to work now. As she returns to scrubbing the floors, you notice the tears start to stream down her face. I just, Jim, Jim's gotta get game, man. Gotta get game. That was just a bad roll. Okay. So that ends our turn. Two turns each. Yay. A deep thunder reverberates through the gun through the gondola. Clouds start to envelop the ship. Their unnatural black uh, color rap rap uh, rapidly this eclipsing any natural light, plunging everything into shadow. No immediate effect. All right. So, um, I'm 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 a, the good father is gonna go over here and talk to. You. The third. War Warren Worthington. Arthur Holloway the third looks pensively out the window, his suit immediately pressed, immaculately pressed. Have you been in here all morning? Did you see anything suspicious? I'll ask, have you been in here all morning? You think I did this? Ha! That is rich. He turns away from the window to stare at you. Do you know what the problem is with people like you? You stick your nose where it does not belong. He takes a long draw on his cigar, then exhales slightly in your direction. I was in my cabin most of the morning. I only left it to take breakfast and enjoy the view. Thank you for ruining both. Uh, remain silent. No? Nothing else to say? Then go bother someone else. He shoots at you with a well-manicured hand. You notice the glint of his hand. Heavy ring embla emblazoned with an occult emblem. Gain one clue token. Interesting. Incriminating evidence has been updated. Okay. Preston is going to. We'll probably need this over here. Preston is going to. I don't want to look out that window just yet. I'll let Jim do it. Preston's going to move 
here and search that. This door leads to the rest of the dirigible. This section of the hallway leads to the first class passenger cabins and several crew only rooms. Discard this explore token and display the entry hall tile as indicated. Oh. First class cabins are located along the starboard side. Place and place explore tokens. A couple of doors are marked as crew only, but you will have access to them during the investigation. Place the explore token is in the The hall extends further into the dirigible. Captain Pike mentioned that the murder took place in a room down the hall. Place a site token is indicated. There appear to be some kind of marking on the floor. Place a search token as indicated. You may move one space and he will. Okay, so that is Preston's turn. Let's try this one more again with Jim. One more time. Oh, yeah. So, is everything okay? One more time. Let's try to influence this lady. Oh, sorry there. Okay, so he has an ability that says you may convert uh, one of these into a success, and he's going to use this other clue to convert the other one. So he has two success. She comes to a decision. I really do not want to cast aspiration, uh, aspersion, aspersions, but if this were part of some ritual, she takes a deep breath and gestures toward Arthur Holloway III. Last night, when I was delivering a cocktail to that man's cabin, I noticed that he had items with unusual symbols on them. Do you think he could have had something to do with the murder? Gain one clue. The incriminating evidence has been updated. So it's not looking good for uh, Warren Worthington III. That was my first action. My second action is going to be to move. Um, I'll move here, which should tr which triggers that. Uh, from here, you can see the storm gathering outside the ship. An investigator in the viewing room one, two, or three can look out the window at the storm. Look out the window. Looking closer at the gathering clouds, you are overwhelmed with impending dread. As if sensing your unease, the storm ignites another dark lightning bolt just ahead of the ship and the gust of wind rocks the dirigible, forcing you to steady yourself. Something sinister is at work, and you cannot, take, you cannot shake the feeling that if you do not stop it, everything will be lost. Suffer one face down horror, then the scar. Oh, Well, that's all right. He can get rid of this. <laughs> so let's shuffle this up. That is okay. He can get rid of face down horror with ease. Once per round, he can get rid of face down horror. Alrighty. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so he'll get one face down horror. And discard. All right, everybody's gone. He moved, talked to Warren. I call him Warren. His name's Holloway or something. Uh, he talked to her and then moved here and looked around. Um, uh, he is here, but he needs to move here because there's a line right there. So once he steps here, that'll open up. 
but there's crew crew quarters uh sorry crew quarters guest quarters we can see what's going on okay the wind rises from nowhere and vanishes just as quickly no immediate effect all right things are going to start getting worse if we don't hurry up so um Jim will we're gonna hang on to that for right now. We'll get rid of it in a second. Jim's going to move one, two, and then open and then check it out. This door proves uh provides crew members direct access between the crew office and the observation deck. Check it out. Uh the crew's the, the crew office is well lit. The smell of cigarette smoke wafting throughout. Place the study. Oh. You might be right. The study with the lead pipe. Really need to alphabetize these. Okay, yeah, that's in here. Study. Those belong there. All right. So this goes like so. A young man in an officer's uniform is sitting at a desk covered with charts and other official documents. Place a person token is indicated. This is this is Officer Butler, the Stargazer Majestic uh, Navigation Officer. An overturned sofa, a cushion, catches your eye from across the room. Place search token as indicated. You may move one space as you go. Oh, no, no. Okay. Alright, so that's two for him. Move and explore. Okay. Uh, the good father is going to move. Uh, I should press this nerd, but let's check out his room. One, two, and then he'll move again. One, two. Find out what that is. Reveal. The hallway leads to several more rooms. Discard this uh, sight token and place hall two. All two electric boogaloo. Corner. Falls in. Corner. Corner. Lots of hollow corners. Hall one. Hall two. Move this over. Start that and place a door to it. More doors. Real fake doors. Uh, a couple of coach cabin doors stand along the starboard side of the hall. Here, here. At the far edge of the hall, the medical office door stands ajar. How can a door be ajar? The door to the engine room is locked tight. On the port side of the hall, you see a door that is slightly open with a soft light coming from within. This is the ship's cargo hold where the victim was discovered earlier this morning. There is lots to do. 
Lots and lots to do. All right, so we need to do some rearranging. So let me, and that might cover up Jim. Uh, so that is Father Mateo's turn, suppressing Fairmont's turn. Uh, let's get some here. Looks like this is the edge. Oh, there. That gives us lots of room to open up stuff. Okay. Preston's turn. Um, Preston is going to open this door, find out what's going on here. Let's take it a door at a time. The sign reads, Cabin 1. This is the cabin of Arthur Holloway III. Heck yeah, explore. This is the cabin of Arthur Holloway III. The lavish furnishings are, star are a stark reminder that you have entered a first-class cabin. Discard the explore token and place cabin number one. Cabin number three, cabin number four, we're probably going to need that. Cabin number so we're probably going to need three and four as well. So cabin number one, so we discard this one, but this still does. On the dresser, there's a small ornate box covered in arcane symbols. Place search tokens in the cabin. You may move one space. Oh, heck yeah, we are. And uh, I'm going to explore what the, whatever the heck that is. I'm exploring that thing. Okay, so a small ornate box is covered in arcane symbols. Search it. As you examine the box, you cannot see any latch or lids. Spinning it on its side, you notice that the symbols themselves can be moved. Tap to attempt, and this is Preston, a lore. I only got two lore. Uh, I need to get Father Mateo in that room to do that. Okay, all right. So. Well, I know... I only have two two times to do it, so let me position Father Mateo for success. Um, um, uh, hum, uh, hum, uh, hum, uh, hum, uh, hum, uh. One. Two. That ends this. That's that. Okay, that ends his turn. Uh, so let's see. I need to get tokens for move for action, or else I'm gonna keep forgetting who did what. Jim opened the door. Father moved into the room, and he appeared. Okay. So just so I don't forget who who had a turn to go. I'll I'll take I'll take them off when they're their turn and I'll put it on after their turn so I don't forget. Okay. This seemingly infinite depth and expanse of the ocean fills you with a sense of insignificance and futility. This mythos affects the investigator with the lowest lore. That would be Preston. Your head starts to spin with vertigo. Uh, test to willpower. He has three. So test. So I need to make two. Uh, one, two. Got it. If you pass, you realize that now is not the time for a philosophical notion. Cool. Okay. So the good father is going to go one. Two, and attempt the puzzle. Mm -hmm. 
I'm good. I'm good. Well, I'm okay. Uh, as the last symbol slides into place, you hear a soft click as the side compartment pops out of the box, revealing its contents. This must be Arthur Holloway III's secret stash. Gain the sedative's common item, then discard the search item. Sedatives. All right. Sedatives. 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 Equipment. At the start of your turn, you may discard three damage and three horror. If you do, discard this card and end your turn. Cool, Father. Father's getting some good stuff. So, and discard this. Alright, that ends the Father's turn. Uh, press on to the next room. One, two. There's a symbol on the floor. Um. So there's a cabin. Let's look at the symbol on the floor. There's some kind of markings on the floor. The markings are some kind of scuff marks, perhaps made by someone's shoes. You dismiss it as common wear. As you turn away, you notice a small item amongst the alcoves. Gain the arcane manuscript common item, then discard the search token. In and I will have to read. And I'll see if that's a free action. Okay. Roll one additional die while resolving a lore test. Preston, that is what you need. <laughs> and let's see if I can look at it without... Oh, it's not even in my inventory. Okay. Alright, so that was your turn. Jim, so done. Done. Jim, you are going to look at whatever this is. Uh, an overturned sofa couch looks out of place. You turn the cushion over, noticing what appears to be a fresh blood stain on it. Upon closer inspection, you realize the blood is thick and congealed. Being so dark that it has almost a glit glittering shine to it. Your murderer must have come through here at some point. Gain the forensic evidence unique item. Forensic evidence. Start the search. The incriminating evidence has been updated. Okay, so then we need to... Why is this guy just chilling in there with all that blood? So we're going to go here to talk to him next round. And we're done. Hey, Francisco. Well, Francisco, welcome, welcome. Pull up a chair. All righty. So that is the three of them. Two actions is killer. The ground gives way beneath Father Mateo's feet, threat threatening to twist an ankle or worse. Father Mateo suffers two face down damage, agility in the gate. Then he flips two damage face up. So he rolls three, and we're looking for two successes. Uh... Yep, then he's looking for two successes. Oh, one, one. So he takes one face down damage and he flips. He flips it face up. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch time. I keep forgetting to focus people on my turn. That would really be smart if I do that. If I focus people and do his ability. Alright. Shuffle these up. And he gets one. And we flip it face up to see what it is. Head trauma. Your thoughts spin out of your control. Knock loose by the latest blow. Resolve immediately. Become mesmerized. Then flip this card face down. Uh, so we get mesmerized. They're all the same condition. It says at the end of your turn, 
uh, an alien will take control, flip this car. Oh no! Actually, what the alien does is different. So let me grab all the different cards. Shuffle. Okay. Oh, cool! Okay, mesmerize. And then flip this card face down. Okay. I am going to Jim. He could take it. It's crazy. He's okay so far, but we need to get people focused. And that's as an action. Um I don't want I want <laughs> I don't want to do it. Um let's say Preston. Preston's gonna open this door. This door leads to the crew quarters, a placard that reminds you that this area is off limits to passengers. The room is filled with rows of beds, each neatly made footlocker sit each neatly made footlocker sit in front of each bed, a nameplate for each crew member affixed to them. Discard the explore token to place the crew the crew bedroom floor tiles. Oops. Start room. Package. Crew bedroom. Crew bedroom. Oh. There is a door. Okay. Got a clue. A folded letter sits on Ethel Gibbs' bedside table. Place search token within it. The foot locker belonging to Officer Butler, sealed with an elaborate lock. The door provides a crew member's direct access to and from the storage area in the crew quarters. That's interesting. Okay. And yes, I'll move in as my action. And then my and then my second action is going to be to search Ethel's stuff. A folded letter sits on Ethel Gibbs' bedside. Let's check it out. You pick up the letter, immediately noticing the overall ornate handwriting. This writing style has long been out of use, especially within the working class. The letter is clearly romantic in nature. It starts with, my dearest Jonathan Butler. Ooh. I have lost much in the last few months, but finding you has returned me to a path that I thought forever closed. Uh, the letter goes on to gush about their relationship. The end of the letter catches your attention, however. When I arrived in this time, I was adrift. Thank you for helping me find the way. Eternally yours, Ethel. As you go to return this letter, you notice a pendant sitting on the table. Gain the elder sign pendant common item, then discard the pendant. Uh, sign. Arrived in this time. Hmm. Strange things are afoot. Okay, this all sign pendant is... Da, 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 da. Roll one additional die when evading a monster. That goes to Preston. That goes to Preston. In this time, huh? Okay, so that's pull that off. That's your turn. Um, Jim, let's question the let's question the 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 the, the butler. Officer Butler is analyzing navigational charts at a small desk. His uniform, normally pristine, looks disheveled and sweat soaked. You s who has access to this room? No, you seem nervous. Everything okay? I, um, uh, no, nothing's the matter. He wipes a bead of sweat from his brow. This murder has everything, everyone on edge, and I'm just trying to maintain calm and order around here. He notices the food, 
he notices the food tray sitting on the desk for the first time and takes the opportunity to change the subject. Have, uh, have you had a chance to eat breakfast? If not, you really need to eat. He points to the plate with his fork. This crimson carp is an Ethel Gibbs specialty. I hurriedly ta he hurriedly takes a bite, wiping the red sauce from his lips. I do love that girl. He takes another bite as he nervously continues his small talk. I have never met anyone so young that she knows so much about the world. She certainly has an old soul. That is why, when we arrived in Arkham, I intended to propose to her. As he finishes the last of his meal, he lights a cigarette. I really should get back to work, and I assure you I have more important things to do than listen to me. Uh, you have more important things to do than to listen to me talk about my personal life. Let me know if you need anything. And a clue. Incriminate. So she is from another time, and she knows how to make stuff. Okay, so that was my first action. Second action. So she's she's prime suspect number one. She's from another time. Uh, we'll do one, two, and that'll be the end of his turn. All right, Father Mateo. Father Mateo. <laughs> Oh, Father Mateo. Um, I need you to be useful to me. So I'm going to send you ahead. One, two, one, two. Just in case you're going to hurt somebody. Now I'll end your turn, which will flip this card, and let's see what happens. Arcane Danger. Uh, knowledge has roots in the dark and dangerous practices. You must consider what risks are worth taking. So flip the card. Yeah. Suffer one face down horror unless you drop a spell, then discard this card. He does have a spell that lets him get rid of horror. You are another investigator within range, discards one horror, then flip this card. I'm going to discard this spell because I've got horror mitigation abound. So uh, then discard this card. We will discard this card. Discard this spell. No spells for the good father. Okay, so that ends that. Here we go. Preston Fairmont suddenly stumbles and falls into a pit that extends deep into the earth. After falling for what feels like a lifetime, he slams hard into the ground where he started. Preston suffers two damage and one horror. <sighs> um, observation plus one. Oops. Negates. Um, I get to roll an additional die while resolving a test because of the arcane manuscript. And that's what I got. So I'm rolling five dice. Come on, baby. One, two, Three. <laughs> that is three. No, so I negate two damage and one horror. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> We're on the pinstripe soon, soon. So uh Brian is my hey Cynthia, hey Brian, hold my chair. So Brian is my instructor on painting minis. He's teaching me uh how to paint. And Jim, Jim here, I'll hold him up. I painted him, and, he, and I wanted to put pinstripes on his suit, but it's like an advanced technique that I'm super nervous about. So Brian's trying to get me to get out of my, my scared space and be more comfortable uh, because he, said he, he thinks I have potential. So uh, he wants me to just try to forge ahead, but I'm still nervous. So soon, 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 Brian. All right, so he's okay. He negates it all. Uh, the rainstorm picks up pace, and you notice that the sky is taken on an unnatural glittering black hue. The ship is rocked by turbulence as lightning cracked just off the starboard bow. Doubt creeps into your mind, and for the moment, you consider abandoning your efforts. Each investigator suffers two face down horror. So this is a thing of horror. Two face down horror. Uh, willpower negate. So, four for Jim. Uh, one, two, because I don't feel like dealing with that stuff. Um, five for Father Mateo. Uh, 
Uh, one, two, he's good. Next up is Preston with three plus one for a test. Uh, roll one additional die when, when uh, resolving a test. Uh, is this a test? Yeah, I guess this would be a test. Ah! Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, so he's going to suffer two face-down horror. And we're going to start having to get rid of these things. Okay. All right. There is no t no try or try not. <laughs> I will, I promise. All right, so um let's start negating some problems here. Jim's going to have to spend his turn helping. He's going to move one here and blowing the golden trumpet will get rid of one face down for impressed. Oh, it says within range. Within range, so I don't have to move. Each investigator within range, which is three, may discard... Each investigator within range may discard one face-down horror. Each investigator within range. Ooh! So, that's a strong weapon. So, he'll discard his, he'll discard yours, and he has none. Each investigator within range. Not one, each. Including himself. So, he'll discard his, he'll discard one, we're good. If you find another item, we can get rid of the other one. So that was your first action. Your second action is going to be to open that. The door place reads cabin two. This is the first class cabin assigned to the investigator. The first class cabin provided to you by Captain Pike is luxuriously decorated. Discard this token. The contents of your luggage are neatly arranged around the room. It is a good thing you always come prepared for the worst. Place the Gatling gun common item as indicated. What? What? Uh, who's picking that up? <laughs> I think Jim's going to pick that up. Now I've got a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Gatling gun. Oh, no. Gonna give me that. Yeah, Jim's going for that. Whenever stuff starts showing up, it's time to shoot something in the face. Is this a common item? Gatling gun. Oh my word. Look at this beauty. This weapon damage is equal to the number of successes rolled while attacking with this card. Oh no, that is awesome. So that's here. Okay. And yeah, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that will. As you stand at the threshold of the room, the air pressure drops and you feel a strong wind brush across your skin. The room is thrown into pitch blackness, yet you can somehow make out a large bat-like shape surging towards you. It's three burning eyes piercing your soul. You find yourself rooted in place, and just before the massive shape reaches you, it disappears. Suffer one face-down horror, and then place darkness in your space. And place darkness, everybody. Darkness. Nope, that is the one thing I don't need. There we go. All right. I'm going to pick it up and run. All right, um, you good sir are gonna move here and you're gonna try to pop that lock. The foot locker belo uh, belonging to Officer Butler, there's an elaborate lock preventing you from opening it. That's... The lock seems simple enough, given enough time, you should be able to discern the combination. So I've got four, because this is a jelly check, so I got four chances. One, two, four, five, six. One. Sorry, I'm just doing it in my head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times. So next round, I got it. One, two, Three, four. I'll deal with the lock next time. 
that ends my turn. Uh, so that suppressed. Father Mateo is going to. I think no, this is where the murder was. Took place. But let's start popping some doors. I'm gonna open up this one. Uh, actually, I'm gonna open up this far back. That's the medical room. This door to the medical room stands slightly ajar. Dr. Rose Barnett's desk dominates one half of the room, while an examination table and locked cabinets fill the other half. Discard the explore token, please. And there is no door, there's just a picture. Click that photograph. Okay. There are clues. A locked cabinet stands against one wall filled with various medications and neat rows. Place search tokens indicated. You can move one space into the room. But I don't want to. Um, I'm not going to move one space into the room. I'm going to open up this door. The door leads to the engine room. It is locked. Okay, so I can't open up that one, so I'll open up the one above. The ship signs read Cabin 4. This is the cabin of Fred Cooper, the man whose body was found. A bearded man is sitting on the edge of the bed, holding a worn tobacco pipe in one hand. He has a defeated and nervous look on his face. Place a person token is indicated. Fred Cooper? Wait, I thought that was the man that was murdered. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I thought he was the dead guy. Uh... Uh, candles have been arranged in an intricate pattern on the floor. Uh, yeah, something weird's going down. Yeah. Okay, that is Father's turn. Oh my gosh. Alright, so let's find out what's going down. Um, that ends our turn. The dirigible begins to shudder as it is buffeted by high winds. The Mythos event affects the investigator with the lowest deck agility three three and four so it's between these two i will say die here i'll say one two uh, sorry one two three four five six so father mateo you are knocked off balance and are thrown to the deck strength the uh pass strength three you roll three uh, one. If you pass, you manage to absorb the impact. If you fail, you are tossed against the wall, and you try to stand. Suffer one damage and become dazed. He cannot become dazed because of the diver's helmet, but he can. But he darn sure is going to suffer one damage. Face up. Painful clarity. Uh, the pain cuts through your muddled thoughts, allowing you to see the solution clearly. Resolve immediately. Gain one clue. I know who it is. So suffer one damage, and then flip this card face down. He cannot become dazed. Okay, so. First things first, Jim's going to... Uh, Grab that. 
And then Jim is going to move one, two. Now let Jim. Um, let's finish this up with Preston. Off. Preston's gonna finish off this thing. Step. One, two. And he had four. Puzzle solved. With a little effort, the lock releases. You open the lid to find various clothes and personal effects. A pocket watch lying on top of everything catches your eye. The initials WR are engraved on the back. Gain the pocket watch common item, then discard this WR. Isn't that the name of the guy who died? Uh, pocket watch, right? Yeah, and I'm about to lose that thing. Because I gained an item. W-R. Why do you have this in your stuff? You may perform one additional puzzle step while attempting a puzzle. And his ability, once per round, when you gain an item, you may uh, discard a face-down horror. Oh. Okay, then discard the search token. Perhaps you should ask Officer Butler about this watch. Perhaps I should. The incriminating evidence has been updated. All right, so Jim, you're gonna go deal with that. One, two. One, two, one, two. I'm gonna open up this door, but we do need to ask him. I wish there was a way to get between. Let's open this up. Uh, the door provides crew members direct access between storage area and crew quarters. Uh, the faint light in the storage room only amplifies the sense of dread as you uh, get from the scene before you. Place all, place the storage hole tile as indicated in the storage hole. Storage hole. In the center of the room lies the body of the victim, W.R. William Rushford, surrounded by various occult symbols that appear to have been drawn upon, uh, drawn using his blood. Place the search token as indicated. Across the room, you see a middle-aged woman leaning over the body. Place a person token as indicated. This is Dr. Rose Barnett, Stargaze Majestic Physician. You see an overturned piece of luggage that has been pulled out of place and left open. Place the search token as indicated. Something's going down, something's going down. Okay. Uh, the lights in the room flicker repeatedly, and for a moment, there are three large burning eyes in the darkness. They are fixed on you, and you find it hard to breathe. As terror grips at your heart, you find yourself unable to look away. Suddenly, the eyes disappear, and the lights return to normal. Nobody else in the room appears to notice. Suffer one face down horror. Come on, I just got rid of one. Telling me, Smalls. Uh, yep, let's go into the room. I'm going to get Jim to deal with him about that pocket watch. Okay, Father Mateo. Let's find out what's going on with these candles in this room and this guy. First, let's um, look at the candles. You try to discern the true purpose of what is uh, clearly a ritual lore, which is four for you. Uh, one, two, three. Let's just let's just go all out so we can figure this. Three. You pry a candle from the floor to examine it. Gain the candle's common item. Examining the symbols etched in the wax, you can confirm this ritual is intended to ward off misfortune. Gain one clue and place darkness in your space. 
I did not mean to pull the lights out. Candle, 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 where are you? Candle. Uh, you may discard this to convert all um, oh, while casting a spell. Wow, I should not have given up that spell. I got two things that help him with spells. And darkness is in this room. With the light from the candle extinguished, the room plunges into complete darkness. You hear the flapping of wings, and in a brief moment you feel a sudden rush of wind that sends a chill up your spine. Suffer one face down horror. Father well, could take the horror. He can't take the hit, so. Uh, he's. Probably at the start of his turn, he's probably going to use this to get rid of stuff. Um, so that was his first action. His second is to talk to this. Fred Cooper sitting on the bed, a look of defeat on his bearded face and an old Dublin pipe hanging from his chin. Tell me what happened this morning. Fred stares blankly at the wall across from him. I had forgotten some some important items in my luggage and went to retrieve them. He takes a long draw from his pipe, a sad look on his face. When I got to the storage hole, I managed to get my luggage open before seeing the blood. This is what I saw first, the black oozing blood everywhere. I'm pretty sure I yelled for help, but after that, everything is a haze. Listen, I have studied rituals. He shifts uncomfortably, then takes a long draw on his pipe. The ritual that was star uh, started in that room, he pauses, and his eyes gaze over for a moment. It is not natural. The blood was too dark. The symbol's sinister. I do not know exactly what it does, but I can tell you that it's not good. Not for any of us. As if one, as if on cue, lightning flashes outside. Gain another clue. Okay. All right. So he finishes his turn. Uh, we need to get back and tell this guy WTF. You need to finish investigating this, and you need to check out these last two areas. Because I think we know, I think he's the one that did it. Um, I think he did it. I think he did it. I just need to get it. Let's see if we can survive this. Jim Culver glances ahead only to see himself from behind. His sight stretched thin and his mind nearing breaking point. Suffers three horror. Lore negates. Uh, four lore. What else you got? I can convert Snot's influence test. Okay, that's what it is. Two! Two, so... Wait, do I get a clue? Do I get a reroll? Nope, two. So I get that, and I'm about to flip it up. Let's see what happens. Minor shock! Ah! Your heart races and your and your breath catches in your throat. Resolve immediately. No additional effect. Flip it face down. Come on. Come on. Go it. So minor shock. Nothing bad. All right. Investigator phase. All right, things are getting real. So. Uh, Jim, let's get to that guy and find out what the heck he did. One, two. One. And you just gotta wait till next turn. Uh, actually, no. No, 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 no. You're not gonna do that just yet. Your first action is you're going to play the trumpet. And it says investigators within range, which is three spaces. One, two. So let's get rid of that. Get rid of one of yours. And you're within three spaces. You hear the beautiful song. Let's get rid of it. And then his second action is to move one, two. And that will end. Um, the good father is going to move one. This is locked. Two. And open that and check that out. Ooh, wow, look at that mess up. 
Attempt to bypass the lock. Search cabinet A01. Combination requires observation. He only has two. Oh, I hate these. I hate these so much. Ugh. One, two, three, four. Yes. One. One, one. One, one, one. One, 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 one. Okay, so we know one is in the proper place. He's going to use a clue to try again. One, we know that's right. Two, two, two. Okay, one wasn't in the right. One was, wait. So three or four is in the right place. And I think that's all he's going to do. So three or four is in the right place. One is in the right place. So it's either three, four, one. Okay. So I'll have to try one someplace else. And then three, three, three. So one, second place, three, three, three. So that's his turn. Um, you were, you helped, and then you moved away. So you're, you're done. Father Mateo's done. Uh, Yusa. Yusa! You can check the body or you can check the luggage. Well, uh, let's check the... We know the doctor didn't do it. We know it's this guy. We know it's this guy. I know it's him. Know it! But I will... Check the body. Let's <laughs> check the body. The body of William Rushford lies face down, surrounded by dark occult symbols written in blood. There is an acrid stench of death in there. You bend down to examine William Rushford's lifeless body. The first thing you notice is the large uh, laceration across his throat, the blood still pooling behind, beneath it. You fight the urge to retch. Suffer one face down horridge. Horridge. One face down horridge. One face down horror. Willpower negate. I got one. No problem. Uh, as you step back, you can see that the blood appears to have been drawn to resemble wings spreading out from the victim's body. Other intricate symbols have also been drawn in blood around. So we're going for lore, which is two. Then when we're doing a lore check, I get an extra die. And... You may perform one additional puzzle step. You're not, you're good with that. One additional die while attacking, while evading, and lore. Okay, let's see what we got. We got nothing. We got a whole lot of nothing. That's a whole lot of nothing. As you might, you cannot recall what the symbol is. And then let's talk to the doctor. What can you tell me about the body, doctor? I'm just in the accusation points at this time. What were you doing before the murder? I spent most of the morning going over paperwork. I took a quick cigarette break in the crew office and then returned to my duties until the body was discovered. I know you're doing your job, but do I look like a killer to you? She steps back from the body and realizes she has blood on her white flat shoes. Oh dear, that is going to take some time to get out. some blood on her shoes from that she went and took a break in the in the office which could possibly be but he's been in there there's blood on the couch he's got the pocket watch she's from time he's in love with her he's our guy okay so that ends everybody he is our guy Paranoia grips at your heart, and you expect to be attacked at any moment. The Mythos event affects the investigator with the most weapon. Jim. It affects Jim. Your vision blurs, and you find yourself standing in an ancient temple, a pharaoh in dark robes seated before you. Trapped in his hypnotic gaze, you watch in horror as you are forced to strike yourself repeatedly with your own weapon. Wow. This is a lot. Okay, so four. Four. 
Um, yeah. Just one, so I'm gonna take two face down horror and one damage. Uh, suffer two face down damage and two horror uh, and two horror. Is it two face down damage and two face down horror? I guess not. So minor shock, nothing happens. Weak willed, become mesmerized, then flip this card face down. Uh, I negated one face down damage. My rolls are terribly. <laughs> All right, so there we go. By the end of your turn, an alien takes over, and we see what will happen. Okay. Well. I know it's him. I know it's him. But I have to fix the intercom if I'm going to help with this. We need to question him about it. We're going to find out what happens. Come here. And uh, I'm okay with horror. I can get rid of one. So we'll do. Come here and we'll talk to this guy. What you doing, bro? Uh, how did William Rusford's pocket watch end up in your locker? A look of surprise comes over Officer Butler's face. How did you, um, I mean, where, uh, I, I, I do not know what you're talking about. His eyes dart around the room as he reaches for a pack of cigarettes from the desk. Start talking. You slam your hand on the desk and point at accus uh, an accusing finger at Officer Butler's direction. Restraint. Can I just whip out the Gatling gun and just be like, it's about to go down? Uh, I could. That's influence. I only got one. Officer Butler looked nervously around the room. I do not know what you're talking about, but I have to get back to work. I'll deal with you next round, sir. Um, Preston is going to try at this body one more time. So, it's two plus one, three. Come on. Two success. One, and then I spent it. You realize that these blood drawn symbols are typically associated with a summoning ritual. You can feel the mystical energies about the room. You cannot begin to imagine the foul creature that has been drawn to this world with this ritual. You also recognize the symbols as the one. As same ones found on the hilt of the ritual dagger you found on the observation deck. It seems obvious that the dagger is the murder weapon and whoever placed it is the murderer. Okay, I got a theory. As you turn away, a sense of determination comes over you. You resolve to stop whatever events has been set in motion here. Uh, become focused. I got a theory. I got a theory on what's going on. So let me tell you what that is once I get focused. I'm focused. It says you may discard this card to convert all magnifying glass to successes when resolving the test. Okay. Here's what I think happened. This guy, he's a lonely dude, right? He he searches the internet looking for looking for weird stuff. Looking for tentacle stuff. And he basically summoned her. He fell in love with her. She is from a different dimension where she's like kind of Cthulhu y needs to eat people. She was in the crew cabin with him and they're both in love. Like she he loves her. She was in here. The the victim came in here while she was going to going something. She changed, killed him, and made a ritual of it. She's crying because she feels remorse on what's going on. She hid the murder weapon over here from stabbing him. Or he killed the guy. He killed the guy so she could feed. That makes more sense. And then uh, 
they're they're the problem. She's gonna turn into a monster with wings. He's the guy that did it. I just need to make him talk. That's that's my thought. That's what I think's happening. So Preston has one more turn. Preston's gonna move here. Uh, Preston, what's the shortest path to this guy? One, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two, one. No matter what, I'll move here. And that'll end Preston's turn. I think, I think that's what's happening. He's the guy, I think he summoned her from a different time because he was all lonely and looking for tentacle stuff on the internet. And this is all their fault. He probably asked him for help since he's a cult member of some sort, but he's our guy. Okay, who's left? Uh, Father Mateo. Um, let's try this this thing because I need to get to the engine room. Uh, search cabinet 801. Alright, so we know one is right, just not where it is, and three or four is right. We're gonna do one, three, three, three. Okay. So one, three, four. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Uh, which one was right on the first? I think three belongs here. Fourth. Okay, so two are right. So I got, I want to believe the one and three are correct. Wait, what? Two are correct. So one and three, so threes were in the right place. Threes were in the right place. Somewhere. The one's correct. Everything's there that needs to be there. I just need to know how to order it. I know the one is right. Three could be at the front and then four four. So three one four four. I'm gonna really take a chance with this and use this last clue to try it. Three one four four. Yes! <laughs> yes! With the cabinet unlocked, you find a letter and photograph hidden behind some of the medicine bottles. The letter is addressed to the doctor. It claims that the writer knows about the doctor's past and will expose it to the captain if she does not do what the author wants. The photo shows a large group of people gathered together, almost like a family portrait. A face is circled in red and the name Florence Stagg is scribbled across it. Upon close inspection, you realize the circled face is of a much younger Dr. Rose Barnett. Florence Stagg. As you search the, pho the photograph for other familiar faces, you see a young William Rushford at the center of the photograph. The rest of those gathered purposefully surrounding him. You flip the photo over and see a caption that reads, Rushford, Holloway, and Stagg families, London, 1887. Rushford, Holloway, and Stag. She must be Stag. She must be Stag. You are just to you're you're just about to put the photo away when a face in the background catches your attention. A woman in a servant's outfit stands at the edge of the photograph, nearly out of frame. If the photograph was not over forty years old, you would swear that the woman was Ethel Gibbs, the young stewardess aboard the Stargazer Majestic. Gain the photographic evidence unique item, then discard the search uh, the search code. Perhaps people in uh I think like I said, he's the guy. He summoned for some reason. Maybe he, he knows, but the doctor didn't do this. He did. Uh father. I'm on to you. I'm on to you. <laughs> I'm on to you, sir. Um, perhaps the, the people involved with the photograph can explain their relationship with the victim. In addition, you might also want to ask what Dr. Barnett about the blackmail left. I know who did it. <laughs> I know who did it. All right, so that was the first action to do that. The second action, uh, one, two. I know who did it. All right, oh, things are getting sweaty here. So if we can survive one more, I'm interrogating that guy with all, with all, with the hardest amount of prejudice. 
Oh, oh, at the end of my turn, I would have been mesmerized, so uh, what happened? You may s you move two spaces towards another random investigator. Um, one, two. And then discard this card. Sorry, I'm supposed to do that at the end of my turn. Okay. Come on, Mythos. Be nothing. Be nothing. Just nothing. Jim Culver limbs are wretched in, into impossible angles by an invisible force. Four damage! Oh! I can't take this. I'm almost dead. So, jeez. I'm gonna have to give him um, the sedatives from Dr. Mate from Mateo's gonna have to give him the sedatives. Uh, two, so he's gonna take two damage. Ooh! Uh, can I do anything? Oh, wait. Nope, that's an influence test. Yeah, that's all I got. First up. No immediate effect. Only a flesh roll. Second up. Come on. Come on. Focus. Focus. Hey. Uh... All the breath leaves your body in a whoosh as the blow catches you in the stomach. You wheeze and gasp for air. Become stunned and discard this card. Become stunned. You cannot perform more than a single action uh, during your turn. Ugh. Gross. Okay. A torrential- come on! A torrential rain begins to assault the ship. As another bout of turbulence rocks the dirigible, a wave of vertigo passes through you and you, and you stumble. Each investigator moves one space towards the storage hold. An oily presence in your mind calls for deep-seated fears. Could everyone on board be guilty? Is this all an elaborate plot to humiliate you? So we need to move... We all have to move one towards the storage hold. It's pulling me away from this guy from solving this case. Uh, willpower negates. Jim first. Ooh. Jim first. Uh, one, two, three. He's fine. Next is the good father. Rolls five. Uh, one, two, three. He's fine. Next up is Preston. Um, one, two, they're all fine. Oh, man, come on, 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 come on. Um, Father Mateo is actually going to go first. And is it, does it cost an action to give somebody something? Uh, trading. Yep, trade action. Trade possessions with other investigators. Pick up and draw possessions in your space. Okay, so... He is going to... Such a wasted turn. He's going to move here and give the sedatives to him. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let me rethink that. Let me rethink. Um, yeah, that would help Jim. He's going to move here and give the seven ghosts to Jim. Uh, that is his turn. Done. All right. Start of Jim's turn. The sedative says, at the start of your turn, you may discard three damage and three horror. If you do, discard this card uh, at the end of your turn. So let's get rid of all this garbage. This. will stun uh, at the end of my turn, but I'll discard it now. That is... I'll discard it. Just so I don't forget. So I only get one uh, single action. One, two. Okay, Preston's turn. Um, Preston is going to search the luggage. Uh, he might want to talk to her. 
the luggage might hold something because he was here and he dropped his luggage and ran off. She knows what's up. He's the guilty guy. I just need to get to him. Let's go here and talk to her about what's going on. Uh, we can tell. Uh, what can you tell me about? Uh, why are you being blackmailed? What can you tell me about this photo? What can you tell me about the body bag? Uh, Preston, do you have influence? You do. Why are you being blackmailed? I um. Where did you find that? That normally that that normally composed Doctor Rose Barnett seems. Suddenly anxious. Influence. I roll five dice for influence for Preston. Um, and this focus might be a thing I use. What the heck is that? So I'm going to use this to make it two. Dr. Rose speaks quietly, a desperation in her voice. You want to know the truth of it? Fine. Arthur Holloway III is blackmailing me to get access to illicit medication. I was once a young doctor practicing in Arkham. When I lost my medical license, I escaped Europe with a new identity and a new license. I have just tried to live my life ever since. When Arthur Holloway III threatened to expose my past, I panicked and just gave in. But now that William Rushford has been murdered, I cannot allow his threats to keep me silent. She shifts uncomfortably. Yes, I know William Rushford when I was young, but honestly, I did not even know it was him until this morning. I have not seen him in years. I know it seems suspicious, but you must believe me when I tell you that I have nothing to do with his murder. Perhaps Arthur Holloway III can confirm Dr. Rose Barnett's story. I know who did it. <laughs> I don't need that. So they've all gone, and stun falls off. Stun falls off. Okay. Everybody's looking pretty clean right now. A young woman is investigating the observation deck. Place a person token as indicated. Um, this is Doc Fisher, coach passenger and traveling companion of the victim. A shimmering wind rushes through the gondola. This mythos affects an investigator with the lowest uh, willpower, which would be Preston. The air is sucked as the wind rushes by. Black spots begin to appear at the edge of your vision, and you struggle for breath. Strength, as strength two, you have four. Okay. One, two. Good. If you pass, you manage to stay conscious long enough for the wind to pass and the air to refill your lungs. Suffer one face down horror. Okay. Just handing out horror like candy. Um, if you fail, bad stuff happens. Wow, really bad stuff happens. Okay. All right. Sir, speak up. Speak. I haven't been dropping no eaves. I'm going to pocket watch. Start talking. Actually, before that happens, before that happens, let's roll this back. Before that happens, I'm going to do the same thing, but before that happens, Father Mateo is going to go first. Father Mateo is going to uh, focus. Another investigator within range becomes focused, which will be, which will be Jim. Then he's going to open this door. So we'll do it in that order. So he'll open the door and that'll be his turn. He'll be done. But, speak! Wow! Uh. He's, okay. And then Father Mateo's turn of opening. Ah. Uh. The cabin is sparsely decorated, a large bed dominates the space, while a sleeping bag is laid. Card floor token. Place a stinking clue because I can't do anything. Um, protruding from under one of the pillows on the bed appears to be a worn book. Syndicate. And 
kill me. And that will be the end of history. So those two are done. Wow. All blanks. All right. So, Preston, one, two, one, two. This is getting ridiculous. That's Preston's turn. Uh, Father Mateo went, so that's Preston. Oh my god. Corridor in front of you twists and stretches on forever. It is impossibly long. Impossible. Each investigator in a hall or alley suffers two horror willpower gates. You're in the hall, Preston. Oh, whatever. Um, He's going to spend this clue to make it two so he doesn't suffer anything. Yep. Yep. So, he's good. Stargazer Majestic is tossed by Fierce Winds, throwing everyone aboard to the floor. Each investigator suffers one damage. You find yourself entranced by the storm, the wind in the sky calling on your name. A strange and foreign thought fills your mind. If you killed everyone on board, the murderer would be dead too. You force yourself to breathe, panic setting in around you. Each investigator suffers two negates. Okay, so first let's deal with we suffer one damage. Jim. No additional effect, minor injury. Father. Drop one random item, then flip this face down with a back spasm. One random item. So... Item. 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 This is just evidence. Drop my knife. Okay. And you know, flip one horror face up, then flip this face down. <laughs> Lightheaded. What happens? Uh, flip one damage face up, then flip this face down. Flip, 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 flip. Infinite flip forever. So this is just flip, flip, flip. He's like, ah, the whole time. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, let's deal with the with the willpower and the gates. Four. Uh, one, two, you're good. Next stop is Father Mateo. One, two, three, you're good. Next is Preston. One, two, you're good. Okay. All right. Damn it, Jim. Um, let's see. We're just going to speak the heck out of this guy's face. Um, this is all strength stuff. So you're going to first let Jim try. Let Jim try again. Start talking. Two successes. One, two. A defeated look comes over Officer Butler's face. Look, I know what you're thinking, but I swear I did not kill anyone. I'm a thief, all right? Not a murderer. He takes a long draw from a cigarette, then exhales slowly. When I saw Dot Fisher leave the, to get breakfast and William Rushford head toward the storage hold, I knew I had a small window. I was in their cabin for less than ten minutes. I had just returned to the office after dropping the watch off in my locker when the alarm went off and the murderer... I swear this this is all I know. Damn clue. Terminating evidence has been up. Okay, next um I'm going to I have nothing to negate damage. <laughs> this is bad. Father Mateo's in a bad way. So let's talk to let's talk to the, the snobby mixed bomber face. Um one, two, and that'll end his. Father Mateo is going to uh, pick it back up his weapon and then search whatever that is. A book has been hastily shoved underneath one of the pillows on the bed. Richard. You pick up what appears to be an old journal. Flipping through it, you realize that it must be the journal of William Rushford. The entries span over 50 years. Gain the old journal unique item. This Then discard the search token. An investigator holding the old journal unique item can read its entries by interacting with it in the app. Uh, the 
Of course, it would be an action to read the stinking journal. So Preston's going to use his action to read the stinking journal. The journal dates back over 50 years. The early entries detail William Rushford's involvement with the Church of Starry Wisdom. When the church was forcibly disbanded, Rushford, a fiery, and de a fiery and devoted youth, set forth to England to form a new sect. As the journal continues, you see Rushford's growing concern over the morality of his actions. He speaks of regret and his need to correct his terrible mistake. He talks about his failure to disband the cult and in response to, to a failed assassination attempt. How he fled England and went into hiding. Clue. So, Okay, so that's one. There's still more entries to read. Let's keep doing it, too. The closing entries detail William Rushford's return to Arkham to stop a terrible ritual. He speaks of fear that the Starry Wisdom might try once more to kill him and use his blood for a final ritual to summon the Haunter. The last few entries seem frantic as Rushford realizes that he may have put himself and the world in danger by returning to Arkham. His final entry is as follows. Could it be, after all these years, a specter from the past has finally come to haunt me? If only I had realized sooner, but now I fear it's too late. Gain another clue. Cool. Then become focused. Very cool. Okay, so we've got two focused people. After considering the information from William Rushford's journal along the with the photograph, you are convinced that someone related to this photograph killed William Rushford from fleeing the Starry Wisdom cult. Okay, so. New, new theory. It's her. I know it's still her. So I'm going to say it's her. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. It's her. I'm coming back over here, fixing this thing, and saying it's her. She did it. Because she's from the past. She was part of the cult. She wanted to... She probably wanted to... Found out what he was doing and wanted to stop him. She did it. Okay. So. Father Mateo's done. And Preston's done. That was Preston's too. Father Mateo picked up, searched the thing. Jim questioned him and then moved. She did it. Calling her out. Preston Fairmont's bones uh, creak and become as brittle as stale bread. Preston Fairmont suffers two face down damage and two horror. Will negates. Then he flips three horror face up and becomes dazed. Okay, his will is three. His will is not great. Uh, his will is not great. <laughs> Um, he's going to spend the clue to make that a twofer. So two face down damage and two horror. He will skip. He's got two. Then he flips three horror face up and becomes dazed. He's going to take the two horror, the two uh, face down damage and not and negate the horror. Then he flips three horror face up and becomes dazed. So one, two face down damage. And then flip three horror. Well, we know this horror means um, flip one face down damage. Then I'm going to flip this one to do the horror to this one to where it doesn't do anything. So I survived that by being cheap <laughs> and become dazed. I survived that by becoming cheap. Oh, it says then flip three horror face up and become dazed. So one flip, flip, flip. Two, flip, flip, flip. Three, flip, flip, flip. So, being a little cheap. The butler did it. It's elementary. <laughs> My definitive theories. She did it. She did it. I, I, am, I am more than willing to believe. You cannot spend clues to convert dice results uh, at the end of your turn to discard this. Okay. Come on. 
One of the front observation windows shatters from the torrential onslaught, and the stinging winds uh, blows through the dirigible. The vessel struggles to push forward against this new force. As the air around you darkens, you feel a malevolent presence within it trying to bend you to its will. You scream, your throat raws as you force. Each investigator suffers three horror and one face down damage. Willpower negates. Gods. Come on. Um, I'm going to spend this clue to make that three. So it says each investigator suffers three horror and one face down damage. Um, I'm, that's three. I got three, so. I'll take one horror. Which I have to flip face up. Whenever you end your turn in a space with darkness, suffer one face down horror. Because I got rid of the one damage and two of them. Your turn, five. Two. So, I'm going to take the horror over the damage, so I'm going to get rid of the damage and one horror, which means I suffer two horror. I really need a spell. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Um, first one, become dazed, then flip this card face down. The so dazed means I, can, I can't spend any clues for whatever's coming up next. And... Whenever you end your turn within range of another investigator, flip one horror face up. This just stays up. Okay, paranoia stays up. Okay. Then your turn. You're just gonna... Ugh, you are just gonna struggle. You spend this clue for two. Uh, he'll take the face down damage and one horror. Face down damage. He could take damage and one horror. Suffer one additional face down horror, then flip this face down. Oh no! Okay. So he's in a bad way. Okay. So... Uh... Preston's gonna go first. One, two, and try to fix this. We know who did it. We know who did it. Uh, attempt to fix the intercom. On screwing the faceplate, you notice that some of the wires appear to have been purposefully sabotaged. You will have to reconnect the wires, tap uh, to attempt the puzzle. Preston's doing it, so three. Well, I know that that one at the end, you know, something's got to connect. Um, in this one? Okay. You can't rotate. Oh, you can rotate. So it's just rotating. You're rotating what? All of them? Is it rotating all of them? No, you gotta pick what you're gonna rotate. Okay. So I can... I just have to connect these two. I see what I gotta do. So I gotta pick one and then rotate it. Um, Okay, I could do one. Two, three. Okay, so one, two, three. And then I'll move the other one and flip it, and that'll be it. Okay. That's three. And that ends his turn. Jim is going to do the same. He's got three chances. Attempt. One. 
two, three. Okay, so Jim and Preston are done. The ship's intercom has now been repaired. When you are confident you have gathered enough evidence to make an accusation, you can contact Captain Pike. You will need to know what your key pieces of evidence are that link your suspect to the murder, as well as where that evidence was found. Wow. Alright, so that ends their turn. Uh, Father Mateo, whenever you end your turn within range of another investigator. Flip for Okay, Father Mateo is going to move one, two, and then search. Tag marks the luggage as belonging to Fred Cooper. Among the contents, you find a strange scrapbook with newspapers clippings detailing gruesome murders and suspicious deaths. The first page has an old article detailing the deaths of a husband and wife, Joseph and Margaret Cooper. The story talks about how a freak accident robbed a small boy of both his parents outside Miskatonic. Accompanying the article, the photo shows a young boy, unnamed, talking to a police officer while the covered bodies of his parents rest in the foreground. Flipping through the rest of the scrapbook, you see dozens of articles highlighting deaths related to suspicious or unusual circumstances, including a recent article about a rash of deaths related to a new exhibit at the Miskatonic Museum. As you return the journal to the suitcase, you notice a leather-bound book resting inside. Name the astronomy guidebook common item. Then discard the search book. Uh, so let me get with that. Yep. Usually it's that. Astronomy guidebook. So I'll just let's you may ignore riffs. Huh. Maybe you should ask Fred Cooper about this crap. And that ends. It's her. I know it's her. Where are all the monsters? No cultists? I am suffering a lot of damage because of this. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, that was Father Mateo and Jim already went. So, um, you didn't spend any clues at the end of your turn, discard this. At the end of your turn, discard this. So, these are gone. He's got four out of eight horror on him. And three out of six. He is not doing well. Uh, this stays up. He's not doing well. Jim's doing okay. Okay. Your hand suddenly begins to be uh to burn. The missiles affects the investigator who has a light source with the lowest observation. No one has a light source. Has a light source with no effect. The storm reaches a crescendo as hail and wind assails the stargazer majestic. The viridescent glow Illuminating the sky begins to pulse in harmonic rhythm with the lightning. Creatures swarm around the ship, threatening to tear it asunder. The wind shimmers back and leaves you with a feeling of oppressive dread. Or horror. Ugh. Okay. So. This is just getting worse. Uh, he's going to use his focus to make that a threefer. <laughs> so he only takes one horror, uh, and it's not face down. Uh, no additional effect, minor shock. You freaking horror. Um, can you convert anything? You may discard this to convert when casting a spell. Nope. So you're gonna take. Two horror. First one, no additional effect. Flip face down. Gain one clue, then flip this face down. Terrifying truth. Okay. And you, who are going to suffer something, because you only have 
This might be you going insane right now. Um, you're gonna suffer. You're gonna use your focus to make that um three, which means you're gonna suffer one. No additional effect. Flip this face down. So four. Oh. Stop doing stuff. You hear the sound of grinding metal from down the hall followed by a large thud. The engine room door is now unlocked. A deafening screech reverberates throughout the ship, and you feel the deck give way beneath you as the ship lurches. The panicked voice of Captain Pike comes over the intercom. What in the Sam Hill was that? I've just lost all in and engines. A sinister cackle echoes from the engine room, followed by the familiar voice of Ethel Gibbs. It's too late, you fools. Nylar, Nyarlathotep, Nyarlathotep has returned, and all of you are my sacrifice to usher him into this world. Remove Ethel from the board. I told you it was her. I knew it. With the murder revealed, you no longer need to inform the captain of your findings. If only you had uncovered. I, I had one. Ah. Uh! Perhaps you could have stopped them from advancing their sinister plans. Discard this interact token. I know it! A crash overhead, a crash is heard throughout the ship as an observation window shattered. A haunting horror lands on the deck, wings folded in as it looks about the room, searching for prey. Spawn a haunting horror. I was right! I want them to know I was right! Okay, I don't have the mini painting, so we're going to be using the tile. As the bases are ridiculous. This is the base. It's stupid. This is the card. This is the base. <laughs> no. So I will be rebasing them and painting them as we go. So a hunting horde crashes down. I knew it! <laughs> Screams of terror emanate from those gathered on the observation deck. Several passengers run toward the cabins while others die for cover. Remove all person tokens from the observation deck. Um from the board. Okay. Defeat the murderer and repair the sabotage engines in order to survive. The hunting horror moves three spaces to be between range of as many investigators as possible, then it attacks each investigator within range. Monster attacks. The, screams eminent, uh, the, the creature emits an ear-piercing cry. You are uncertain whether the sound emerges from some orifice or is simply the result of writhing claws scratching against a slate gray hide. Uh, willpower. Jim. Damn it, Jim. I knew it! <laughs> oh no! If you pass, you cover your ears and block, suffer two face down damage, and become dazed. I just failed that hard. Dog it! Okay. Um, and Preston, who is probably going to be injured or dead. Injured and or dead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Two face down damage. So he has and become dazed. So he has four, five, six damage on him, and he's dazed. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range. What the hell? So the game just like says, okay, 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 die. <laughs> so. Oh, I was supposed to do the horror check. This. Confirm. Another sound of death and crazy. And let's see if I fail this one more time. <laughs> Brian, why do you hate me? Uh, <laughs> So, um, I fail that. Fail that too. Now, if you fail, you are deafened, suffer two horror, and become dazed. I'm already dazed. First horror, flip one face down damage, uh, face up. No additional effect, flip it face down. Nothing happened. So, I've got four stinking horror on out of eight. You. <laughs> Brian, I know you say that with love.
Two, he negated. Thank you. Good lord. All right, Father Mateo, you're on the case. Ah, Father Mateo first. One, two, pop that door. I knew it was her. Hate being right. That's the same awesome. oh. Okay, as you enter the engine room, you notice a black mist has filled the room and the wind whips about as if alive. Discard the explorer token and place that room. Across the room, Ethel Gibbs is drawing arcane symbols in the air while chanting in a strange tongue. Fallen occultist, that is Ethel Gibbs. I see that. I see that. Uh, Stagmaning of pipes have been torn from their moorings and scattered around the floor. Place an interact token. <clears throat> Help me, Father Mateo. You're my only hope. That's his two. Let's deal. Let, let my boy Jim deal with this thing. So he's going to. Jim is going to attack this creature. And Jim's going to attack this creature with Gatling gun, which is a firearm. With the beast squarely in sight, you open fire. Oops. I got two successes. If you pass, lead punches violently into the creature's side. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test result. If you fail, you miss wildly, suffer one face down horror. I didn't fail. I, uh, the Gatling gun, the weapon damage is equal to the number um, of stars rolled on attack, so four damage. Okay, and then he is going to attack it again. Um, this time he's going with the sturdy luggage, which is heavy weapon. Strength. One. Dang it, I thought I had a clue. And I can't lose, lose, use clues this turn anyway. Uh, if you pass the full weight, if you fail, the momentum carries you off balance and you struggle to stabilize your footing. So I failed. That ends his turn. Preston's turn. Preston's going to go with that 2 by 4 Swinging. Heavy weapon. Back. Heavy weapon. Um, this is observation 3. Uh, oh, wait. Um, I get to roll next to die. While monster's attacking you, I got to roll that additional die, but I... While monster's attacking you... Evading... That's it. That's all he can do. Hey, XE, what's going on? <laughs> Things are a bit desperate! <laughs> yeah, this is the airship one. This is the airship one. I, uh, if you fail, you think you see your opportunity and you take it, realizing you underestimate. Suffer one face down damage. So how much damage do we have now? Let's calculate it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One away from one away from whatever's gonna happen. That was the first swing. Second swing incoming. Attack. Heavy weapon. Strength. I got two. 
Okay, if you pass, you you channel your rage in a series of vicious blows. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon damage plus your test. The weapon is two, so that's four. And that's them too. That's it. That is it. All right, let's talk about the curious about. Sorry, I just want to make sure that that's a line of sight thing when it's when it's yellow. You're not gonna tell me, are you? Of course you wouldn't. What about you? No. Nope. Rules reference. Want to see? It. This is a this is a yellow line and a dotted line. So I'm just trying to see what those mean. Uh, I think that probably means unpassable, but it's not really saying in the book. Uh, destruction, maybe? Objective, outdoor. I don't know. I don't know. Peter Chance Recover Fan. <laughs> Uh, I I like to play Jim, Pete, and Marie and pretend they are all the same band. <laughs> all right, let's see what uh, these these dazes will fall off. This is getting crazy. So we're coming down to the wire. I'm sure this is my final round without he's doing. You hear the sudden, the steel frame of the gondola begin to bend as the wooden decking and observation deck starts to splinter. With a sudden snap, the front of the dirigibles ripped apart and sucked into the void raging below. Each investigator and each monster in the viewing room moves to the nearest space in the entry hall. Each investigator who moves suffers four damage, strength negates, then discard. So, here. Any monster it's in? And each monster move here all this breaks apart so but we need to do strength or else people are dying so four strength preston that's utter crap that's utter crap so preston let's see what happens when you damage Wounded. If an investigator suffered damage, whether face up or face down, equal to or exceed their health, the investor becomes wounded. When an investigator becomes wounded, he gains the wounded condition and discards all face down damage. Wounded. You cannot perform the move action more than once each round. When you have suffered damage equal to your health, you are eliminated. Of all those. And it is your turn with strength three. Two, so you would take damage four so you would take two damage which would put you at five you're still okay uh you cannot move a barricade feeble drop one random item then flip this card face down back spasm you're right at that's your random item that is the gatling gun that is the cat, cat that is all that good stuff this is equipped to your horn too Woo-wee! Alright, so... Let's make this... Where's my D4s? Here it is. My D4, one, two, three, four. 
three. The sturdy luggage. Did I get my gallon gun? Okay. Uh, these fall off. Uh, landing armor moves three spaces towards the investigator within range who has suffered the most damage, which would be Jim. And attack. Monster attacks. The scream seems to smell. The creature seems to smell your blood and emits an ear piercing shriek before slamming its leathery body into yours. Strength two. Move this closer. Uh, strength three. Two. Hey, if you pass, you punch it in the center of its mass before it can do any more damage. Suffer one face down damage. One is what I needed to die, so I'm wounded now. Start all this. I'm wounded. Okay. Ethel Gibbs moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator, then attacks the investigator. So, one, two. And no investigator in the space. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range. Okay. So, here we go. Firm. The creature vanishes from sight. You look around anxiously until a heavy drop of greenish gray fluid drips onto your shoulder. You look up to see the beast prepare for another meal. Suffer two horror. Observation. So your observation is three plus one. Gates. Did the monster take damage? No. The monster, I've hit the monster for um, eight damage. But it has not taken, it didn't take damage from me punching it. I suffer one. Uh, so that is two. You're okay. And observation three plus one. One. Nope. Uh, you suffer a horror. After you perform an, an attack action, flip one face up, one horror face squeamish. Awesome. Awesome. What else you want to do to me? What else you got? What else you got? Okay. So, Preston's going to take another swing at this creature. Attack with heavy weapon. Strength two, your strength is four. When she, when the viewing platform exploded, did the monster take damage when this, uh, let's take a look at the log. You hear the steel frame crack, the nearest, each investigator who moves suffers four, then discard. So no, it didn't say the monster did, it just said each investigator who moves suffers damage when that broke. So it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been the, um, the monster too. Uh, yeah, each investigator who moves suffers, so it says, when sun snap, the front dirigible ripped apart and sucked into the void. Each investigator in each monster in the viewing room moves to the nearest space in the entry hall. Each investigator who moved suffers four damage. The monster didn't take anything. Uh, I did punch the mon- you punch the monster, it can do- so I just suffer a face down damage. Yeah, so, nope. Uh, what's wrong for string? Got two, I did. If you pass the full weight, so that's four. That's two plus two. Uh, blow equals- equal to the weapon. One, two, three, four. Firm. Monster is Oot! So we killed that guy. And then I will move one, two. Uh, Jim is going to pick up his heavy baggage and move one, two. Um, the father is going to move one, 
And then the father going to do what father do. But what is this first of all? Pipe segments have been torn from their moorings. Attempt to reassemble the pipe. One of us has to do this, or we need to take her down. Leave the pipe segment alone. Um, I'm going to attack her. Attack. And I'm attacking with bladed weapon. I uh, need observation. I only get two dice for observation. Snake eyes. You reg your register movement as your opponent's foot moves, kicking you and Christian going backwards. That. That. A move, and that's it. All right. In the distance, you hear sudden screams and howls of rage. The, the sound is gone as soon as it begins. Mythos affects the investigator with the lowest willpower in the, in the space with the most investigators, which would be trust. Your vision tints red, and a powerful anger courses through you. Suffer two horror. Um, rolling two dice, because minus one die. In your fear, you lash out at your companions. For each horror you suffer, each investigator in your space suffers one damage. So one. So you're gonna suffer one horror, but you had five. No immediate effect. Put face down. Suffers one damage as you hit me. Suffer one additional face down damage, then flip this card face down. I'm on my way to death. Uh, towards the nearest investigator, then it attacks the investigator in the face. Ethel Gibbs wraps grimy hands around your neck, squeezing tight. Strength. Strength ho. Two. Yes, if you pass, you pry the fingers from your neck, and Ethel Gibbs finally relents when you hear them snap. If you fail, so. Oh. So only me again. Uh, it, uh, the cultist snickers and you realize you've stepped within a glyph etched in the ground. It glows red as study the symbols. So for one face down damage and one face down horror, lore negates. I got four lore plus one. Five. Yeah, her health is ridiculous. But you, watch this crap. You didn't see it? Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that crap. <laughs> I'm so pissed. I will spend this clue to negate a, uh, a damage. And I'll take the horror, face down horror. And the stinking mythos, please. Oh, all right. Can I shoot through spaces with a firearm? Firearm. Nope. Gotta be in the same space. Attack. Back at you. Four. Nope, gotta be in the same space. If if he selected an item with ranged icon, the monster may within range. Nope, I can Gatling gun you. I've got range on the Gatling gun. No, I don't. I I really don't. I really don't. So. I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to Gatling Gun shoot the cultist. Because it's got range on it. Attack, firearm, and. I'm, that's why I'm searching all my cards to see what I can do. <laughs> Dang it! I'm going to attack again with the Gatling Gun. 
Freaking killing me. Come on. Thank you. So if you fail, you take. I don't fail. So if you pass, your your proper form earns you a hit. The monster suffers damage equals to equal to your monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage. So not plus my rolls. If you pass, you perform your form you hit the monster suffers damage equal to the weapon damage. Okay. You are gonna move one, two. And that's all you can move because it says you can you cannot perform the move action more than one. <clears throat> Father is going to attack with a bladed weapon. Nope. If you pass, you drive the weapon at your post throw it, the monster suffers damage equal to that, plus I do. I am failing hard. <laughs> I would too. Well, it's not the dice. It's not the dice. It's me. I can beat her. So whenever you end your turn within range of another investigator, flip one horror face up. Uh, become stunned, then discard this card. Cool. Stunned now. Stunned now. That's a thing that happened. You cannot perform more than one single action during your turn. Start at the end of your turn. Awesome. After you perform an attack action, flip a horror face up, but I have uh I did. I did. Sorry. I did twice. So this first one, whenever you end your turn in the space with darkness, suffer one face of horror. This one, no additional effect, flip it face up. Okay. Ugh. We're not going to be successful in this one, but at least I knew it was her. I'll write all along. You hear the sound of something tearing through the bulkhead on the starboard side of the ship. With an unearthly screech, the walls of the first class cabins are ripped apart from the outside. Each investigator and each monster in cabin one and two moves to the nearest space in the entry hall. So, this is gone. And the scarred cabin one. Suddenly, oh god, a star spawn. Oh, this thing! <laughs> okay, okay, alright. This is getting ridiculous. You're watching horror happen. Star spawn. <laughs> Smashes through the wall and into the hull, its tentacles writhing about it. Sorry. The buh -buh 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 -buh. Move two spaces towards the nearest investigator, then attack a uh, space with the highest strength. Uh, highest strength would be pressed. Pressed. Ethel Gibbs swings the staff at your ankles. The ground rushes up as you are knocked off your feet. Suffer three damage. Agility in the gate. Jesus. Okay, so three damage. Uh. Oh wait, when a monster's attacking you, I get an extra die roll. So three damage. <laughs> Betting on everyone else. Become focused then. Uh, flip this card face down. Two. Keep face up. Roll one fewer die while resolving a strength test. Three, no immediate effect. Flip, flip this face down. Okay. And then become stunned. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> ah! The star swan moves one space towards the nearest investigator. Uh... No investigators to attack, so it moves here. There's one more space. Stop with the horror checks! Everybody's suffering. So, 
The highest, sorry, the highest one is actually the star spawn. So they'll suffer star spawn. Nope, within range, all of them suffer star spawn. And you feel, the creature's mind reaches out and you feel its mental presence begin to crush your very identity. Flip two horror face up. Your mind struggles against infinity, against this alien creature's suffer three horror. So two horror face up. Uh, one, flip it back down. Two, flip it back down, no effect. One, gain one clue, then flip this card face down. Two, become dazed, then flip this card face down. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so. One, no effect, flip it face down. Two, uh, flip one damage face up, then flip this face down. No additional effect, flip it face down. Okay, then horror time. So willpower. <laughs> I'm going to die. Um, Will's willpower, uh, Jim's willpower is four. Um, uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, so almost. So, what do you get? Drop two random items, then flip this face down, and flip one other face up card. So, drop two random items. Killing me! Killing me, Smalls! Now, we're gonna try to fix these pipes. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, one. What did I drop? The sturdy luggage. Again. Okay. Alright, so that was the two random items, then it said flip. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Flip one other horror face up, then discard this card. Uh, this. No effect. Flip face down. Discard this card. Okay. You! <laughs> uh, five. Five. For willpower. Uh, one. Nope, we can't spend clues because I'm dazed. So, uh, one. One. Okay, so one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four. So you're suffering two. First one, suffer one additional face down horror for each spell you have, then flip this face down. I don't have any spells. Two, no additional effect. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, whenever you end your turn adjacent, flip one face up. Fine. And then you, three. Oh, you get to roll. One. <laughs> One. So I take two. Place darkness in your space, then flip this card face down. <laughs> that is bad for Jim. Oh, no. Uh, suffer one additional face down damage, then flip this card face down. Okay. Anything else you want to do to me? Ah, okay, so... Father Mateo's going to try to fix this thing. Because I think we need to do that. Pipe segments have been torn from their moorings. Attempt to reassemble the pipe. Uh, three, three, four chances with that clue. You can't spin clues to convert dice results to perform additional puzzle steps. So... Um, you cannot perform more than one single action, so it's pipe, return. One, two down, three down, four over. Okay, so four turns to do this. So one, two, three. And that's all I have for strength. 
So the next turn is one, and then one, two, three, four. And that should do it. All right, that's my three. So that is my stun condition and my daze condition gone. And now I have to, whenever you end your turn within range of an investigator, flip a horror face up. What about you? Become dazed. Yay. Okay, flip this face down. All right. You're done. Okay. Um. Is eva evading is an action. Uh, just guys fight while we try to fix this. Um. I'm in a space with darkness. Ah. Um. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll suffer a face down horror. Two. To not do that, I have to move. To move. Oh, I can move to evade. Okay, I can move to evade. Evade is not an action. It's something I do. So let's look up how do I evade. Evade check. Eight. Oh, gosh. Okay, so evading. Uh, if an investigator in monster space attempts to move out of that space voluntarily or perform an, an, any action other than the attack action or move action, you must uh, check an evade check against the monster in space. How uh, he does so by following steps. Determine the monster. It is the cultist. The investigator must evade only the monster in space with the highest awareness. The green value in the top right corner of the monster card. Three. The investigator selects the monster from the monster drawer, then presses evade. Any effects generated from this happen. Okay. So I'm going to try to evade you. Confirm. Cultist grabs your, your collar and attempts to swing you around. If you pass, you pull away. If you fail, you cannot move forfeit your action. So strength is three. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Oh. All right, so that's that action. So then I'll shoot you in the face. That's what you want so much. Attack. Firearm. Two, pass. If you pass, one of your shots pierces the foot and another the calf. The weapon's damage, which is two. So that is the end of Jim's turn. Mateo's done two. Preston can only do one thing. He is stunned. So he's going to do the one thing that he can do. Two by four to the face. Heavy weapon. Strength. Roll one fewer die while resolving a strength test. So I only roll three dice this time. Got one success. That's all I needed. If you pass, the figure's foot is crushed against the ground. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, which is... Stun falls off. Unless I can't roll for the focus, people. What else has happened? As the ship is assaulted by a barrage of hail and torrential winds, the screech of bending metal fills the ship. With a sudden jerk, more of the gondolas ripped away before disappearing into the void. Each investigator in a room in the entry hall, study, or crew bedroom. Entry hall. Study. Through bed. Okay. With more than half of the gondola destroyed, the structural integrity of the ship has started to fail. If the ritual is not stopped and the engines are not repaired in the next few moments, so this is it. Uh, moves up to two space within range of as many investigators as possible, uh, then attack. So, uh, Ethel Gibbs with arms uplifted chants the words to some vile incantation. Suffer two damage and one horror. Lore minus one negates three dice. So, um, 
And I ended in darkness, which, sorry, whenever you end your face in darkness, you suffer one face down horror. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so I will take the damage and the horror to become, to go insane while I'm wounded. To get rid of all of that. But the damage says no additional effect. Flip it face down. Going insane. Jim is losing his marbles. Get rid of all this. And going insane. Okay. Then your turn, Preston. Uh, it would be what? Lore. So one die. Sweet. <laughs> hey, look. I'll negate uh, one of those damages. I'm going to take a damage. No additional effect. One, two, three, four, five, six, which would make me start going insane. <laughs> I'm wounded and insane. I'm losing my marbles. Uh, it says within. Yeah, just, uh, okay. With the highest lore here. Highest lore. You're two, you are three, it is. Creature reaches out with disgusting finger like tree limbs and rakes its claws across your body. <laughs> if you fail, the creature that suffers three damage, I'm dead. <laughs> Jim is a limit. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Can I do any? I can't do anything. Three damage. One, two, three. Three damage. I'm eliminated. That's six. It says when you have suffered damage equal to your health, you are eliminated. Jim goes down. Ugh. God. Okay. Let's see what happens at that point. Yep. Eliminated. <laughs> Jim's insanity condition is done. He's, he's just not well. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That would be the star spawn. Uh, you cannot bear bringing your eyes to see the creature. If you pass, you manage to steal your eyes. Okay, so let's start with Mateo, who has uh, its observation of two, and I need a three. Yeah, this is going to be successful. Here we go. Blank. Uh, you flee from the creature. Your brain resolves that it does not cannot exist. Suffer two horror, then flip three horror face up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is enough for you to go insane. We're not flipping anything face up. You are going insane. Then you have to do observa uh, observation, which is three. One success, so you fail, so you suffer three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, become focused and flip this card face down. I'm already focused. No additional effects. Whenever you end your turn lost in time and space, flip one horror face up. Okay. Can, can you stop now? Can you, can, can you stop? All right. Bottom tail. Let's do it. Uh, this days would have went away. Let's do it. One, two, three, next action. Oh, wait, four. I'm going to use this. Puzzle solved. 
You slide the last piece into place and immediately hear the engine hum as the ship rights itself. You still have to subdue Ethel Gibbs in order to stop the ritual, but at least you are not falling from the sky. So that was her first, that was your first action. Your second action is all we can do. Move on in. All right. That, that ends your turn. My good man here, who is wounded and insane and just suffering, is going to attack with the 2x4. Ethel Gibbs. How much? 24. Yeah, Ethel Gibbs. Heavy weapon. I'm only rolling three dice. Hit. You pass, impact curls your foe aside. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage plus your test results. That's four. Ten. Um, I'm going to hit you again. Okay. Heavy weapon. Strength one. Yep. If you pass, you manage to keep a hold long enough to connect with your weapon. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage, which is two. And that's it. As the remainder of the gondola is assaulted by the black winds, the stargazer plummets from the sky. Although William Rushford's murder is not likely to survive the crash, neither will you. The dark ritual has reached its climax bringing some dark force into the worship. The investigation is not complete. The ship rocks as the last of the engines fail. You hear the rupture of the helium tanks before you feel it. And then the spinning sensation of free fall lurches your stomach up into your throat. You pitch backwards, slamming into the bulkhead as you're assailed by broken equipment and loose debris. You fight your way to the door, scrambling to reach the bridge. As you enter, you realize the futility of your actions. An indescribably terrible creature lives within the storm that tears the ship apart. Time seems to stop, and for the briefest moment, you feel a sinister voice in the back of your mind before you are swallowed up by darkness yay we failed <laughs> we failed <sighs> I was one turn away from letting the captain know one turn away oh one turn away <laughs> he would have been okay if he had pinstripes <laughs> Uh, you don't have any items to help? Nope. Uh, yep, I thought it was as long as there's no walls. Yeah, that, yeah, that was right. That's where I was able to shoot. I would ask for a replacement dice. Oh, gosh, that was rough. Oh, my goodness. Let's go back up. So we passed one, we failed one. I just ran out of time. I just ran out of time. I repaired the I repaired the ship so it wouldn't fall, but the ritual got completed. I knew it was her. Knew it was her. Ah. Uh, so, yikes. <laughs> so we failed this one, which was uh. Let's see. We were on. We have a lot of scenarios to go through. And we will get to them all. Which one are we at? This murder on the Stargazer Majestic. That's the one where we we failed on. <laughs> so alright. That was something. That was something. I need to organize cards and make sure this stuff makes sense. But that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. The two, the two, like I understand why people house rule that you get three actions instead of two, because it just doesn't feel like there's enough time. But the game says that you can do it, so I'm going to keep trying and see. Oh, gosh, my dice rolls are as crazy as ever. Anyway, that is Matches of Madness. And, yeah, we had a really good time playing through that. Too bad that the game wants to keep trying. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun. It's fun. I think this game is a lot of fun. I enjoy it. 
The one thing I really enjoy about this game is that it's a campaign, but not really. It's all individual stories. So like I love crafting stories of short story. It's all short story. And I really love that, that every playthrough is the same rules, but, a diff but different, you know? I like that a lot. I actually really like that a lot. All right. So <laughs> that was Matches of Madness. Um, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I had a lot of fun playing it. I let's see what's to come next week. Is I'm supposed uh, I believe I'm supposed to be getting the package from Roger for um, Dungeon Crusade. So I'll be doing an unboxing. This will be a full open. He wants me to unbox for all um, all YouTube's all YouTube. So I'll be opening up that one and and just throwing it on there. So keep an eye out. Arkham Horror Third Edition's coming. Um, Arkham Horror, the card game, is coming Thursday. Maybe. Maybe it might. I might, have, I might replace that with something. But Arkham Horror, third, it, it's scheduled to happen then. And then Mansions of Madness, I'm coming back for the month of horror and terror. And this ought to be a really good time. So I really appreciate you all joining. I wish I would have won this one, but I'm one for one. I'm one for two. One for two. So I won one loss of the two I've played. So I'm one for two. And we will see if I can do better next time. I will pick the next investigators, have them painted, and we'll play we'll play when we get through and we'll play some Arkham Horror. Alright everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. I wanna thank my Patreons. I appreciate you so much. Um thank you to my YouTube subscribers. I appreciate you as well. I will be having the unboxing for Dungeon Crusade this week, so you can all see what's there, because since the Kickstarter is happening now, and it's a free copy that Roger sent to me, um, to just kind of say, hey, can you display this? Sure, sure. I, I, sure, I, I'd love to do that. That'd be great. Um, the next one, get new dice. I don't know if I, I don't know if that'll matter. I think I need to get a new me. <laughs> I think that's the only way that I'm going to be able to survive this one, but... I have all these dice here, but all right, everybody. Thanks for hopping in. I'm glad you enjoyed the playthrough. Hopefully I'll do better next time, and I appreciate it. So I'll see you all next time. Insert comment here. <laughs> Bye, everybody.